in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed you want to manifest Bible faith? It is predicated on two attributes of God. Very quickly, attribute number one is called his integrity. Bible faith is hinged on two attributes of God. Number one, his integrity. The word integrity comes from the expression or the word integer sameness consistency numbers chapter 23 and verse 29 numbers 23 and 29 numbers chapter 19 sorry 23 19 23 19 God is not a man that he should lie. That means men lie. Men don't lie because they are bad. They lie because they are men. It's a weakness in man that if not assisted through transformation, lying is something that is enshrined in men. For various reasons, they lie. God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. That means he does not make mistakes. Had he said, and shall he not do it? Had he spoken, and shall he not make it good? Do you know what this means? That every time God speaks, he submits to what he says. When God speaks, even him is bound by what he has said. In ancient times, kings were bound by their words. If they spoke foolishly, they would have to pay the price of stamping a foolish statement or speaking foolishly. Remember in the Bible, there were kings who even were willing to give half of their kingdom for silly reasons. It was lack of wisdom in a king that removed the head of a prophet called John the Baptist. For the dance of a young girl, he was willing to give even half of his kingdom without counsel. And he could not reverse it again. And John died. That's how powerful the word of a king is. Everybody say integrity. Can I tell you this? There are men who are sincere but they do not have integrity. Not because they are bad. It takes a lot of factors to have integrity. I can tell you I will meet you by six and my car spoils. Regardless the excuse, with respect to that appointment, I did not show integrity. Correct? Now that's not, that does not mean I am bad or evil. I, am, I was incapacitated. Factors happen beyond my control. But the Bible says when God speaks, he has examined all the factors. There is no such thing as speaking and later he says, oh, I, I didn't know you are from Plateau State to, for me to have made such a statement that I will lift you. I didn't know your situation was peculiar. I didn't know that there would be a pandemic. God is not a man. That means you can trust what he says. This is powerful because see, dear people of God, there are no guarantees in life. Nobody gives you any guarantee anywhere. Young people, listen, waiting for someone to guarantee your success is a total waste of time. There are no guarantees. Your guarantee is the integrity of God. 
God will send you to places with no human assistance. Your guarantee is that word. You will foolishly move as he speaks. Your guarantee is that word. He is a God of integrity. God can be trusted. Let me repeat it. God can be trusted. Don't get used to the disappointment you face from men. I promise you this, I didn't do it. I promise you that, I didn't do it. And you, you, you put God to join that queue. And you believe that just like this one disappointed me. I, I assure you and I bring you good news. Dear Plato, God can be trusted. My Bible and your Bible is full of stories of people who God spoke to and as at the time he spoke to them there was nothing in their life that looked like what he said but the one with integrity had spoken Abraham I will make your name great I will bless them that bless you and curse him that curse you and in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed he met a young boy hiding called Gideon and he called him a mighty man of valor can I tell you this? When we study scripture, it gives us an opportunity to vet the integrity of God. God is not afraid to allow you probe his integrity. The Bible is a compendium of God's integrity that you search for yourself. And if you search well, you will conclude that this God can be trusted. Somebody shout, say, God can be trusted. Shake away unbelief. Say, God can be trusted. Regardless what I see, God can be trusted. Regardless the medical report, God can be trusted. I know you are sitting right now on a time bomb health-wise in, in the form of a medical report, but God can be trusted. Apostle, you are speaking like this because you do not know the huge bills that stand before me. I will still tell you to your face, God can be trusted. Is someone learning tonight? There are probably men of God here, respectfully speaking. You are saying, oh, the reason I'm not succeeding in ministry is because I'm in Joss or because I'm not from the plateau by, by tribe or whatever. Believe me, those things may be very sincere consolation, but that's not the reason. God can be trusted. Ask the man Daniel. He reigned through the dispensation of three to four kings. What is on you is what determines what is around you. You can create through your faith a system of exemption. Are we together? Yes. I want to drum it to your heart. He has integrity and he can be trusted. There are men who can fail you. There are men who can disappoint you. There are offices you may enter in Nigeria where someone will tell you, I promise you, by this time next week, if you are still in this position, call me stupid. And three years later, you are still there. God can be trusted. Someone turned that into a prayer in one minute. God can be trusted. His integrity. Go ahead and pray. Please pray. God can be trusted. Shake away unbelief. Lord, I believe what you told me about my children. I believe what you told me about my health. You told me death will not take me just like that. I believe you. Regardless the symptoms in my body, I believe you told me you will prosper me upon the plateau. That my life will be an expression of your glory. You told me you will help me even politically. You told me you will help my children. That none of them will be lost. As it is now, right now it looks like all my children are going haywire. But in the name of Jesus, I trust you. There are kings, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones. Only a Shua will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. There are kings, there are kings. There are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign for.
forever To his kingdom there'll be no end Listen There are names There are offices And even in that regard they are powerful For instance The president of any nation is powerful Even as men They can change your life with one signature I've had the honor of meeting men of tremendous influence and in one moment when they rub off their credibility on you, it can literally alter the seasons of your life. If men can do that, ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the monarch of the universe. The one who is not threatened by the pride of men. They can say, where is your God? And he's still seated on the throne. If he vows a vow concerning your life, then let God be true and all men liars. Let God be true and all systems liars. Your assignment is to believe in that God. Please sit down. Only a shoe will reign forever. Can I tell you? Can I tell you? Based on wisdom, it is wiser to trust the one who does not have a date of birth. The mere fact that any man can present to you his date of birth already tells you there is a tendency for compromise in his ability to show integrity. There is one who we can search from end to end. We will never find his date of birth. Who gave birth to him? The Bible says in the beginning, not from the beginning. In the beginning. The beginning is a person. Listen. You know what I'm doing to you tonight? I'm shaking away unbelief. Because the strength of Satan is your senses. He will flush your financial situation, your health situation, and bring you to a point where you feel it is not worth it trusting God. God, is it true that you really sent me to Joss? My life has not shown it yet. Is it true that you called me into ministry? I'm tired of this expression of shame. Only a shoe will reign forever to his kingdom there'll be no end listen I say this with all humility and to the glory of the name of the Lord it was in one room the spirit of God began to show me the visions of the things that he's doing through my life today from that one room he said I will take you to the nations I will take you before kings I believed him stupid enough to believe him childish enough to believe him with no human connection I believe God be true how will it happen don't be like Mary how shall these things be seeing that I know not a man every time you are afraid remember the person talking every time you are afraid remember the person talking. He told me, as you travel around, you will have the power to heal the sick. You will have the power to cast out devils. I believed, I believe. He told Joshua, no man will be able to stand against you all the days of your life. So when an angel appeared before Joshua, he removed his sword. He said, who are you? I will kill you with the word that was given to protect me. And he said, no. He had to explain why he came. Can I tell you this? God has integrity. Let me remind you again. God is a God of integrity. If he has told you, he will do it. Did you hear what I said? One scripture and then the other attribute. Genesis 21 verse 1. 
Someone by this night, you will go back to your old notes where God told you things that didn't make sense. You will dust those notes again and say, even though this note is 10 years old, Lord, let's revisit your word again. I'm sorry for my unbelief. I, I thought you were not aware of the pandemic, but right now, my faith is alive again. I wish you could read with me. As many who can see it projected, let's read together in concert. Ready? One to read. And the Lord visited Sarah as he had said, integrity. And the Lord did unto Sarah as he had spoken. Listen, every man you see in ministry, in business, in government, in academics, any man doing anything uncommon today, I can tell you, probe them and if they are sincere, they will tell you. There was no guarantee whatsoever. Ah. Lion of Judah, my trust is in me. I am that I am. My trust is in me. You're the Lion of Judah. My trust is in you. I put them on me. My trust is in you. God is not a man that he should lie. Attribute number two. The first attribute up, upon which Bible faith is built is God's integrity. And then number two, his ability. God does not only have integrity. As powerful as integrity is, it takes more than integrity to sponsor performance. Performance is expensive. It takes a union of integrity and ability. There are people who want to do it, but they are limited. Have you stood before someone wanting to help the person sincerely? And yet you say, I wish I had the means. You have integrity, but you do not have ability. Hmm. Second Chronicles chapter 20 from verse 6 and 7. We are probing the ability of God. Is God that powerful? For me to risk my life and destiny, trusting and obeying him. And said, O oh Lord, God of our fathers, he says, Art thou not God in heaven, and rulest thou not thou over the kingdoms of the heathen? And in thy hand is there not power and might, so that none is able to withstand thee. Verse 7, Art thou not God, who did drive the inhabitants of this land before thy people Israel and gave it to the seed of Abraham, thy friend, forever. He's, he's showing you a display of the power of God. God has ability. He is all powerful. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 17. Let's hurry up. Jeremiah 32 and verse 17 it says our lord god behold thou hast made the heavens who made it who made it what is it about your life you cannot make when god says i will make you believe him vet what he made before you he made the heavens and he made the earth by thy great power so he can make my destiny if he made the heavens and the earth and stretch and stretch out harm and there is nothing too hard for you to do in Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 20 Paul teaching the church in Ephesus says now unto him who is able to do someone shout able to do one more time say able to do there are men who are willing to do integrity, but they are not able to do. They are willing to give you a job, but they are not able. They are willing to see you healthy, 
but they are not able. They are willing to help you, but they are not able. It takes integrity and ability. Now unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all we ask or think according to the power. Every man does according to the power that works with him. Now watch this. If you ask me to lift this um, speaker, I can do my best. I want to lift it. But my strength is limited. Is that true? There are many of you who want to do great things. Apostle, I want to build. Apostle, I want a great future for my children. Apostle, I want to be a man of God who serves the purposes of God in truth. But it takes more than desire. God is able. He has ability. Listen. When you combine integrity and ability, there is no hindrance to performance. Integrity and ability integrity and ability there are people who have ability but they don't have integrity they have the power from a human standpoint to help you but they do not have that 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 sense of integrity to help you there are others who have integrity many so but do not have ability but this god has both integrity and ability these are the pillars upon which bible faith rests the integrity of God and the ability of God. When I send thee, lackest thou anything because I can back you up. Hallelujah. It takes power to make. It takes power to lift. It takes power to subdue principalities and the yokes of darkness. It takes power to advance more than a good intention. Please hear me. Believers, I came with a message tonight. If it is the glory of God that you want to see manifest in your life, it will take more than desire and wishing. You will have to learn the law of faith, even obedience. And it will be based on your understanding that the God who has spoken to you is the God of integrity. The God who has spoken to you is the God of ability. This God can make a fish to carry a coin if it means he's doing that for you to excel. This God can make a donkey, an animal to speak without learning this God can make anything at all happen. He can make the rod to board without a root. I submit to you that I have come to see in my own life and to believe in the power and the ability of God. It takes an unwise person to doubt the ability of this mighty God. I have seen God enthrone kings out of nothing. I've seen God humble the pride of men who believe there is no God. My Bible says only a fool will say in his heart, there is no God. Do not laugh at a man who believes in God's integrity and ability. You will spend your life bending your head in shame. Because from nowhere, as we say, you will see that man rise up like an edifice. The ability and the integrity of God standing behind him like a mighty terrible one. There is nothing he tells me that I do not believe him. I have seen, I have tasted and I have seen that the Lord is good. I bring you a very simple message tonight. It's time for your life to stop becoming a compendium of excuses. 
it's time for your life and your destiny to begin to be an effulgence of the grace of God. It's time for your life to become a preacher, your results to be an evangelist, that people can sit down and say, Lord, I am sorry, just by looking at you. There's something about the glory of God being expressed through your life that can literally stop someone from going to have Alice to get power because it says it's unnecessary. I have seen an example of the power of God in a man. I have seen an example of the wisdom of God in a man. Can I tell you this? If we do not allow our lives to display the power of God, a generation will come that will forget God. You see the things happening right now? Many young people do not believe that God prospers with dignity. And we can sit down and be laughing at them until we have a whole generation that is swept in witchcraft because of the, the, the need, the economic need of the time. Can I tell you this? Enough of too much talking. There must be a display of what God can do. Can I tell you? Your gospel is powerful when your result is standing by you. In Acts chapter 4, when the council called Peter and the others for healing the man at Gate Beautiful, the Bible says when he, they, they wanted to accuse him, but the man he had healed was standing with him. It was an evidence too notable for contention. There's too much proposition of what God can do. My God can heal. The lion of the tribe of Judah, we say. The rock of ages, we say. And everybody just keeps staring at us because nothing in our life captures that reality. I cried unto God and I said, Lord, if you're sending me as a man of God, I cry that you do not send me with a message alone. Uh -uh. It is risky. It is risky to take on this journey with only a message. You need a message and a token of truthfulness called your evidence. You are a true witness when you have a message and the evidence. Ask those who are in the legal practice here. When a judge calls for a witness, your witness is rubbish until you can bring an evidence. An evidence is a token of truthfulness. I was not there when he died. I was not there when he walked upon the earth, but the spirit who was there lives in me. And now he walks through me to prove that what he said was not a lie. Is someone learning? I made up my mind that for the name of Jesus, for my own personal benefit, and for the people that he's helped me inspire, I will ensure that my life becomes an unending display of the glory of God. There are thrones, there are kingdoms, there are mountains and there are thrones, but only a shoe will reign forever. To his kingdom there'll be no end. Listen. In this crusade ground, there are people who are sick. In this crusade ground, there are people who have been oppressed. You didn't just come to see a man. Some of you came because you believe that perhaps this man that God will use may carry something that will not just whet my appetite and waste my time. That's why you came. Can you imagine how evil it is for people to leave their homes from 10 a.m. in the morning and to come and sit down here and then we preach about a God who is powerful. We say he can heal. We say he can deliver. Then we round up the service and share the grace. What a God. Why should I follow such a God? I will not believe and preach a gospel that has no power. I believe in the power of God. The power of God helps men to see in practical terms the fact that Jesus is exalted. Exalted Lord and exalted Christ. I know that we have a few minutes left, but let me assure you by the God of heaven that God will not allow you go back the same way you came. 
in one moment in the twinkling of an eye your life just changes like night and day you will look at your former self and wonder is this how God can change men listen can I tell you how evangelism was done in the Bible it was not just done by encouraging men to go and preach it was done because of such display of results there was such testimony the recipients of the results were too grateful to keep quiet even when they pleaded with them to keep quiet they couldn't keep quiet how do you keep quiet over a legion of demons coming out of a man how do you keep quiet over a woman with five husbands and now met the savior our evangelism is dull and barren because there are no results to back it it just becomes an annoying episode of arguments I believe in the power of God I have seen the things that God can do I have seen the lives that God can change I have seen what he said come to pass please don't get used to disappointments God is still alive don't get used to disappointments my God I don't know about your own but my God When we pray, he hears and he answers. When we cry unto him, he can arise. This God can give men testimonies. Please look at me. In one moment, I assure you by the God of heaven, he can turn your life around. It is true. This is not just a preacher's gibberish. I honor you too much and I love you to come and stand here and waste your time and talk rubbish. I present to you Christianity that works. I, I present to you the faith practice that works. What men say is none of your business. What did he say? Even Satan is looking for what he said. Because he needs what he said to destroy you. What did God say? I know what he has said. I know what he has said concerning me. I know what he has said concerning you that your seed will be mighty mama i know what he said concerning you that the fullness of your days you will fulfill i know what he said concerning you that he's still the god that heals apostle you've not seen my medical report i know and i understand but let me tell you there is a name there is a name there is a name Listen, this man talking before you is not just speaking nonsense. I have been locked inside a mortuary to pray for the dead. I'm not saying like you close somebody inside a mortuary and you are the only one alive there. I have seen demons. I have seen spirits that control territories. I know what the name of Jesus can do. I have seen revival come over nations and territories. I know that this God is not a fraudster. He's not scamming you. Give him a chance to surprise you tonight. We'll take a few minutes to pray. And please hear me. I know you have cried, but shake away unbelief. Man of God, he's giving you a chance again. It may look like you are not called, but shame on the devil. That God who called you is still alive, standing by you like a mighty, terrible one. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. The face of development.
Lord, grant me the discipline 